Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Another Set of Eyes with today's Excel Bytes blog post. A while back I did a post and showed how I was able to convert a data range into a single column list. And just recently I had someone asking me how I can do the reverse, taking a single column list and converting it into a data range or table. So I came up with a method to do that, and I'm going to show that to you now. So let's take a look. So here is the worksheet from when we converted a data range to a column. Here is the original data range, and here you can see the formula that we used to put the formula in cell A1, copy it down, and convert this data range into a column. I'm going to go over to sheet 2 here. And by the way, I'll put the link to that video in the notes below, so if you want to follow that, you can. But here's the challenge. Uh, let's say we had this column of 30 items here in from A1 to A30, and we want to convert it to look into a table here that is five rows and six columns going from AA to DDD. So ultimately, again, this is what we want it to look like here. Here's the formula we're going to use, and basically we're going to use the offset function with the help of the rows and column functions in Excel. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And again, here's the ultimate result that we want to come up with. And let's start out with looking at the offset function. If I take equals offset, Offset returns a reference to a range that is a given number of rows and columns from a given reference. So if I hit tab, it wants a reference, then how many rows down, how many columns over, and then what's the width and the height, or the height and the width of that range. You notice that those are in square brackets, so those are optional and we're not going to be using those. In essence, for each of the formulas that we have in our 30 block section, here is how I want the offset formula to result in. A1 being the reference, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down to 29 being the rows. And that's, again, the rows that you move down from the reference. So the very first one, if A1 is the reference, I want to move 0 rows down to stay on cell A1. Whereas at the very end one, when I want DDD in cell A30, I want to move down 29 rows, so that's what I want to result here in the last cell. And columns, it's all the same columns, so I want all those to be zeros in every one of the results of the formula. So really, the key is how do we get the rows reference to start at zero in the first cell and end up at 29 in the last cell when we have five rows and six columns. So. I'll start typing the formula. I'm going to type A1, and I'm going to hit F4 because I want to lock that. Then I'll hit comma, and then parentheses, and enter my rows function. And the rows is going to be A1, lock that, to A1, close that parentheses, minus 1, and I'll explain all this after we start talking about how this, how this uh, formula processes. Now I'm going to plus sign, put three open parentheses, and then use my columns function, and I'm going to say E1, F4 to lock that, and to E1, I'm going to close that, subtract 1, I'm going to close that, multiply that times 5, close that, comma, 0, close that parentheses, hit enter, and I have my AA. And if I copy it down, I'll get AA through EE, and copying that across will give me all the results all the way to DD. Now, Again, when we look at this formula, and I click inside here, my reference is A1. That stays constant throughout the entire formula. The columns is 0, so that's constant throughout all the formulas. The key is the rows, and the rows is calculated by using the rows and column functions. So the first thing I wanted to do was kind of lay out the result of how I wanted the offset function to calculate. 
And as you can see, again, I go from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but I see a pattern here. It was easy to get the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That was just using the rows calculation and subtracting 1. That was really simple. But as I move from column to column, notice that 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 adds 5 adds 10, adds 15, 20, 25. So it's really multiples of 5. So the question is, I need to add to the 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 various multiples of 5. That's why I multiply it times 5 at the end. So the question is, how did I get the multiples? And the multiples was, what column am I in going from the original reference point in this case of E1, where my formula is started, and then subtracting 1. So when I go E1 to E1, that's one column, but I want to subtract 1, so I move over 0 columns for the very first one. And then when I'm in the second column, it'll be E1 to E2, which is 2 columns, minus 1, which is 1, times 5, so I'm adding 5. Next will be three columns, minus one is two, times five, I'm adding 10, and so on, and so on, and so on. So let's take a look at, for example, right here where I'm trying to get MM to populate in this cell, in cell G3. If I look at where MM is, I want the end result to be row 13, which is the fact that I want to go from row 1 down 12 rows. So to get to row 13 I have to make sure I go down 12. So I want the result of the offset formula to be A1 down 12 rows over 0 columns. So let's take a look at this and walk through and see what happens. The rows A1 to C3 the result of that function is 3 and then 3 minus 1 will give me 2. I've moved over two columns from my original starting point, so when I look at the columns function here, I hit F9, that gives me 3. 3 minus 1 will give me 2 times 5, that will give me 10. So I take 2 plus 10 gives me the 12 that I need in order for Excel to move down 12 rows or give me the 12th row from the starting point of A1, which brings me down to A13, which is MM, and that's exactly what populates the cell of G3. Now let's say instead I wanted my table to have seven rows and then however many columns it needs. All I need to do, I'm going to just delete all the formulas except the first one, is to change the 5 here to 7. So I'm going to make that change. Whoops, I made it 67 accidentally. So I'm going to make that change. Now I'll copy it down seven rows, and then I'll copy it over to the rest of the columns. Now I only need to go over to column I, and I have a bunch of zeros at the end. But to make this any size I want, all I need to do is make the adjustment in that one uh, segment of the formula in order to modify how many rows I want my table to be. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.